Welcome to The Decision from Nashville EO, where you will hear the rest of the story after tough decisions were made by entrepreneurs who faced adversity and lived to tell about it. Welcome to The Decision, the podcast hosted by EO Nashville. It's all about entrepreneurs making tough decisions in the heat of battle, running our businesses, running our lives, hopefully not letting them run us. Uh, with me today, as always, Mr. Robert Hartline. Here in the flesh with you, my friend. Yes. It's good to be alive. Uh, thanks for joining us. And today, one of my favorite EO members, past president, Catalyst grad as well, Amy Tanksley. Amy, welcome. Hi. It's good to be with you today. I'm glad to be here. <laughs> <laughs> You've got all kinds of stories to share with us today. I have, I'm confident. I probably do. I know you've shared some stories that I'll never tell anybody. I probably <laughs> have. <laughs> probably have. You know, uh, I like to think when you work with people, you get lots of stories. Things happen. That's right. Because people are awesome. <laughs> they can be. They can be. Yeah. But they, yeah, yeah. They, yes, they're, we're going to go with awesome. That's the word we're going to use. Uh, well, speaking of awesome, you've you've told me several times the story of the founding of your company and the TV on the wall. Oh, gosh. Yeah. You have a p great picture. I didn't bring any visuals with me today. But yeah, um, I moved to Nashville in 2003 to work at Assurian when Assurian had offices not far from where we are today over off of 24 and Harding. And they were the ultimate startup, right? We were in like converted trucking warehouse space. And it was a really small company at the time and everybody knew everybody and we all got to be really good friends. And so that's ultimately how I met my husband. And, you know, most of us were new to Nashville and didn't have any family here, but he was the one sort of native. And he told me we should go on a date. And I was like, I don't know why we we're going to do that because... I don't want to get married. <laughs> Who wants to do that? And uh, he convinced me that we needed to go on a proper, you know, eat food together date. And we did. And on our very first date, I said, you know, if you weren't working in cell phone insurance, which has a you know a real ring to it, cell phone insurance. I said, well, you know, what would you want to do? And he said, you know, I've always wanted to open a barbershop and I've always wanted to call it uncle. And I was like, you know, probably a couple glasses of wine in and, the truth serum comes out and I'm like, well, that's really dumb. Why would you, why would you want to open a barbershop? You don't cut hair. I don't cut hair. Why does that sound like a good idea? And he said, you know, I just hate getting my hair cut. I just hate it. It's, you know, it's 30 minutes of my life. I will never get back. And that was really interesting because I'd grown up with a sister in the Midwest and, you know, for most women going to get your hair cut, going to the salon is is a big deal. And you leave after an hour or two hours or, you know, some women are there all day and you feel better about yourself. You feel taller, you feel more beautiful, you feel more powerful, more confident. So to hear a man say that was not his experience was something that I had never heard before. Um, and I'd never had a brother, so I didn't know. And so I thought, oh, that's interesting. So I started going with him to get his haircut and I realized he was absolutely right. There was nothing about that process that was enjoyable for him. So, you know, there was an opportunity. We'll say that. Yeah. Well, I can say that uh, it used to suck for me. <laughs> now that I'm an Uncle Classic uh, Barbershop customer for, gosh, about 12 years now. It's so, been a long time. It has been. It's been a long time. I'm going tomorrow morning. This is about as shaggy as you're going to ever find me. I don't ever comment on people's hair. I just, I don't, you know, I know better at this, at this point, you know, you've learned a lesson along the way there. Well, you know, working in the, you know, we're the ultimate people business, right? You know, I employ professional barbers and stylists and they're really good at what they do, but they have a very intimate relationship with our clients. This is not transactional. And I was at a hair school earlier this week and, you know, told them, you know, they touch people all day long and they touch strangers, people they've never met before. And they wash their hair. And, you know, all of us probably, you know, unless you're in the hair business could count on maybe one hand how many people you've washed 
their hair. You know, I've washed my children's hair, but that's a very intimate act. And there's a lot of trust there. So when you tell me you're shaggy, I don't think that I just think you and your, your barber have a plan. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I don't like to get in the middle of that plan. Oh, I, I have complete faith and trust in Shelby. Well, good. And <laughs> you should. She has very sharp shears. She and does. She's not afraid to use I, them. I do not cross her when I'm in the chair. That's a good idea. Yeah. But people, we have great conversations. People I bet you go do. People deep in the, in the chair, don't they? Oh, uh, yes. Yeah. It's a safe space. Yeah. Do you ever see clients tear up telling a story or something? We do. Yeah, I bet. Yeah. We do because, you know, we get to, I mean, and I love what I do for that reason, right? My every day is very meaningful. You know, there's not one day in barbershop that you don't have a connection with someone. And that's in really happy moments. You know, people come in and get their hair cut when they're going to special events. So when they get married or they're having a baby and they're having pictures taken or you're going to the prom or the homecoming lately, um, but they also come in for funerals. Mm. Um, you know, and hard times in their lives. And we see a lot of clients when they are going to go have surgery or be in the hospital for a length of time and they want to get their haircut before that. And then, you know, when they come home from the hospital and they haven't taken care of themselves or haven't been able to, we take care of them at that point too. So it, there's a lot of connections, a lot of intimate moments. And it is now after doing this for 15 years, really special to know that you've been on this journey with these clients. And, you know, we got feedback from a client named Kevin who I haven't seen in years, but he's one of the very first uncle clients and he was raving on one of my barbers and I'm just so thankful for him. But, you know, we've known each other for 15 wow. plus years. His kids have grown up and left the house and we're, you know, still cutting his hair. Wow. So how early into the business did you discover EO? Oh gosh. Um, we had opened two locations. So we opened our first location in 2008, uh, 2008, exactly three weeks before the economy, the market crashed and it all went to hell in a handbasket, which is really exciting. You know, when you've taken a second mortgage on your house and you've signed a lease and that lease has a personal guarantee on it. Uh, so everything you thought was going to happen suddenly changes very quickly and you have to react. And we'd opened our second location in Belmede. And I ran into Debbie Gordon and I had played, I mean, only in Nashville, right? YMCA co-ed soccer with Debbie when oh, I first wow. moved here. And <laughs> she had gone to Vanderbilt with one of my coworkers. I mean, you know, it's the Nashville way. And we were, I think, in the Gulch. And she said, how's that business of yours? And I said, oh, my gosh, I don't know what I'm doing. And she goes, well, I, I do and I can help you. And I was like, OK, what do you even do? I don't even know what you do. Um, and she told me about EO. And so I came to a membership luncheon and I didn't qualify. We were getting close, but I didn't qualify. And that was when Catalyst came around. Cause I think there were enough of us in the room who didn't qualify <laughs> that they realized there was an opportunity there. That's right. You were in the first Catalyst class. The very right? first class. Yeah. With Bethany, um, and Chris Reddidge and David Fredrickson. Um, there were, I think 20 of us. Yeah. And we were meeting at the original Nashville Entrepreneur Center, which was on Broadway. Yeah. And that would have been, oh my gosh, what year was that? 2010? Yes. Yeah, before yeah, all was the, it? Before yeah. all the shenanigans. Right. So they now. put a honky tonk in underneath the e the old EC space and we couldn't meet there anymore because we were meeting in the evenings and the music got so, so loud yeah. that, you know, Michael, you couldn't hear you couldn't hear anything. And so we ended up, you know, finding different meeting space for the rest of the year. Uh, how did, how did that impact the business for you? Um, belonging to a community with such experience, did it shape the business? Oh, it was life changing. Mm. It was, you know, I don't, I don't know that anybody knows what they're doing when you open a business. And I certainly had no clue what I was doing. And I was, you know, looking for all the help I could get, but I, it's hard to sometimes find. And then to find that space where you feel not only normal, but you can be vulnerable and say, oh, I have that problem too. Or, oh, you've already done that. How did you do that? Um, was, was eye opening that, and then just being around so many interesting, interested people. And I think that's, you know, what keeps me coming back to EO all the time is I have yet to interact with an EO member or a Catalyst member who's not 
interested in something new and exciting to talk about. Let me ask you this question back to Catalyst. If, if, if you met me on the street, right, and I was starting a new business and you were going to talk about Catalyst, how do you describe it for someone? Uh, that's a great question. Um, it is, I mean, I tell people, I'm like, look, I don't have an MBA, I have a finance degree, but that was all book work. Right. Um, and I don't think you can get an MBA in entrepreneurship, but I think the catalyst class is as close of an experiential learning opportunity to get a degree and advanced sort of learning experience specifically for entrepreneurship, owning your own company. And Michael makes it so, you know, because he has so much experience, it is not textbook, right? It is is not theory. It is legit in the weeds, solving problems, evaluating things, experience. Mm. And I don't, I really don't know where else you can get that. Yeah. What, uh, what types of, um, decisions have you struggled with in the past? whether it's personal or business that you have brought to form and, and maybe talk about something that was um, that you had to navigate and you needed the help of a forum. I've loved all my forums and I'm so thankful for my forums. And I think, you know, my forums have helped me with both personal stuff uh, and business stuff. I mean, you name it all the run the gamut. Right. And I, You know, for me, the personal stuff has always been, you know, how to be a wife and a mom and a business owner and combining all three of those is messy most of the time. Um, You know, you can't be the best at everything all the time. So there are trade-offs there. I think the best forum decision-making help that I ever got was around, at the time I thought it was location specific, right? I, we were trying to determine where to open new locations and we can talk about that, but it ultimately ended up being a really clear definition of what my business is and what my business, what has made it successful and what needs to continue to continue to make it successful. Mm, Explain that. Um, I think momentum can be exciting and momentum can be dangerous And at the time, uh, this was years ago, and it still happens, you know, every week. I mean, even in my inbox right now, I get someone pitching us a new location. And, you know, real estate folks are always have empty retail space to fill. And hair is a really easy thing to put in a retail space. And at the time, I mean, this was, gosh, five, six years ago, we probably had five or six locations, legitimate locations that we were evaluating. And they were all very different. And I liked all of them. And I think that's one of my biggest problems is I like too many things. And I brought it to my forum and I said, I'm really, really struggling with which are good opportunities, which are better opportunities. How do I even think through moving forward? And so they really helped me with that process. And how would, did they have experience with location? No. no, no, I've never really been in any forms with other retailers. Mm. You know, there aren't that many of us in EO. Mm. I know you did it. Mm. And so you're very well with site selection, but you know, most of my forum members always have, you know, offices. There's always an office or now a home yeah. office. Uh, and so, you know, we approached it pretty openly and we just put all these locations on a whiteboard and listed them all out. And I sort of stepped back and heard them really evaluate the locations. And it it was sort of like, what do these locations have in common with your current locations? And what do they not have in common with your current locations? And through that process, right, it became very clear. We stopped talking about neighborhoods. We stopped talking about um, street addresses or, you know, in Nashville, the new nomenclature of where these places are, Pie Town or whatever it was, right? That wasn't the case at the time. But we started talking about really what my business is. And it had absolutely nothing to do with the address. It had to do with who we were trying to serve and taking a really hard, honest look at who we are and who we wanted to be. So what what transformed the business out of that? Um, 
I had to get my ego checked. Mm. But I have found forums are pretty good at that. So t- tell me about that. I, I want to be popular. You know, I, and I don't mean that, you know, like from a high school, junior high, mean girl thing, yeah, you do. but yeah, you do kind of deep down. You do. <laughs> well, we all want to be liked. Come on. Yeah. Everybody wants to be liked, you <laughs> okay, know, and course. everybody wants to feel cool. And I know I'm not cool. I've never been cool in my whole life, but you want to feel cool. Right. And I think when someone is pursuing you to put you in a shopping center and they're giving you all of this attention and this area of town, whatever area of town it is, seems really cool and sexy. You want to be cool and sexy too. Uh, and mm. it gets very, um, I don't want to say distracting, but you kind of go for it, right? Like yeah, they wanted, like me. You wanted me. Rodeo Drive, didn't you? Oh, Yeah. Did yeah. you did you get a Rodeo Drive location? No, I got a Hillsborough Village location. That's uh, Rodeo Drive in Nashville. You start talking yourself into things, right? I mean, yeah, yeah, we, yeah. I mean, and I, I met. Yes, yeah, you do, and you want to have your brand and your business on this cool hip area, cool hip part of town, and I think you know you have all these emotional attachments to that. And I think maybe that, maybe that, you know, is separating the emotion from the, from the actual business. And so, you know, for, yeah. So yeah, I got caught up in my own bullshit. <laughs> mm. I could not tell you how many stores I would get with all the optimism. Just, I'm just like, this place is going to kill. Yes. Gonna, I'm just going to like, I mean, literally wheel, wheel barrels full of cash coming out of this place. And you get, you get all set up three months in and you're just like, wow, that was a huge mistake. And you can't call the, you can't call the landlord and go, you know what? This is, this is just not working out. Right. <laughs> you know, uh, thank you, but no thanks. Uh, we're going to try a different spot. No, no. No, you can't. I mean, they're huge commitments and, you know, knowing that my husband and I have signed these leases and, you know, personally guarantee them even to this day is a gut check. But I, you know, at the time we were growing quickly and getting a lot of attention, getting those, you know, I don't want to say awards because it wasn't awards, but, you know, best of, and, you know, the business journal was calling and, you know, you're, you're getting published in places and you're like, oh, well, if this is works here, it clearly should work at these 10 other locations. Uh, and clearly we'll make buckets of money and they'll be really easy to staff and people will come in in droves. And it went against every, it went against everything I ever said in my business plan. What's that? Well, my business plan was very clear of, you know, we aren't going to be all things to all people. Right. We're going to be really good at this one thing. And I, you know, at the time thought that one thing was going to be haircuts. And it turns out my business has absolutely nothing to do with haircuts. What is it? It's community. It's relationships. My business is about relationships. Yeah. I mean, Eric's hair does look really good. It does. Sexy man, really. And the haircuts have to be good. Yeah. But I, it's that feeling when you walk in to your place, right? It is, and we wrote, we said, we want to be cheers, right? Where everybody knows your name Mm. and it's your place. And you go there every two to three weeks you know, that's the feeling that we want to create. And if you're doing that well, you can't be on every corner. Right. You can try, but I I don't know how to teach that. I yeah. know what it feels like. And I think I know how to example that in my stores. But, you know, through this process of putting these locations on the board, it was very clear. And my forum called me out. They're like, look, this is this makes no sense. This is your ego. This is you getting caught up in your own cool, cool factor, I guess. So how do you check yourself now after having that lesson? Oh, I'm doing it right now. I mean, I assure you it, it's the, yeah, this momentum, right. And then, you know, I think I love being in EO because it pushes me, you know, had I not joined EO, I'd probably have two barbershops and I'd probably be very content. Right. And I think they'd be really good. 
but I don't think I would have been pushed or encouraged to think any bigger. And because I've been encouraged to think bigger, we've grown a lot. And that's meant so many great things for my team too, right? I mean, the things that we, that you can't do with two barbershops, you can do now with seven because you can scale and you can do cool shit and you can have a lot of fun. Um, So I'm very thankful for that. But at the same time, I think having those gut check moments of bigger is not better is so humbling. It's so humbling. And, and to add to it, nobody knows what it's like in retail. It's a completely different uh, experience for someone who, especially now after the pandemic and how hard it's been, what, what is, what is it like? What have you learned about staffing in Nashville post pandemic? I, yeah, we've gotten a lot, you know, clear on that too. Right. My, I think in order to provide the experience that we want to provide for our customers, which is treating you like you're in our living room, you're in our house. I hope you feel that when you, when you come in. I do. Um, that Does the he take people, off his shirt? I haven't done that no, yet. Please, please, we don't have insurance for that. That's yeah. it. We don't. Okay. We need you to keep your clothes on, please. <laughs> Trust me. It's, a it's not going to be a problem. People are like, when are you going to wax back? So I'm like, oh, uh, no. Actually, I told uh, Shelby about a great idea. I, I need my back scratched more often. My wife doesn't seem to be into it, but just put oh. that on the shelf of ideas. We're gonna we're gonna make that a clip on Instagram. Oh God! Yeah, that's Please perfect. Don't. Yes, yes, I I'm loving this. Um, no. Yeah, what were we talking about Staff, again? No. Staffing, <laughs> staffing post pandemic. Um, yeah, so that you know, we know the experience that we want our customers to have, and so. We found that that my employees who know how to offer that to customers, right? Because that's a really hard thing to train people to do. You either know what it's like to host someone in your home or you haven't ever experienced that. And so, you know, I don't want to say all, but a lot of my employees are family people themselves. And my opinion in Nashville is that people who have families aren't going to live in an apartment. They want to live in a home. They want the same things that anybody else with a family want. And Nashville being as unaffordable as it is makes that really difficult um, for so many people, for everyone, really. And so we have found that, you know, we've let go of Davidson County. And it's really hard to say that. But we have found that if we're looking in sort of the outer ring ish of Nashville, that we are getting folks who can live in their communities, have more affordable housing options, and they're not spending two hours in their car commuting and they can spend time with their family and invest in their family. And then they can come and invest in their work family. And that's what I want to do. Um, And so we've really focused on that sort of family Family, family, family aspect. Mm. And, and focusing on the types of people that are welcoming and loving on your people. Yeah. 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 And, and that is a really hard thing. to. I don't think you can teach it. Right. You know, right, we can, right. we, you know, we can, we show people. That's the only way to do it is you have to model for someone how to do it. Yeah. Well, that, that when I was hiring people, I found it incredibly surprising how little they knew how to connect with people. And, mm-hmm. and I, you know, I would spend a lot of time teaching them how to show someone respect by even standing and greeting someone at the door and eye contact. You give someone eye contact and you look at them and use their name in conversation. You know what they do? They want to spend a lot of money with you because <laughs> they feel like they are cared for. Like we want to be we wanna cared be, for. Yeah, we want to be seen. Seen and, and heard yeah. and and paid attention to. And so many places. And you just don't see, you know, Nashville is an unusual spot because we're so friendly. It's very rare that you go to a place in Nashville and you don't see a friendly person. True. And that's just how lucky we are. And we have a great city, so that just works. Any other struggles that you had in the business where forum was really helpful? You know, my biggest struggles are always people struggles because, you know, we treat our team, you know, I hate to even call my employees employees, right? We are a team and 
every single person contributing is what takes is what it takes for this to be successful. And so when people have left, you know, when we have turnover, um, I take that very personally and, um, it feels like a bad breakup. You know, it feels like you've lost a family member and that, that sting, I don't think that that sting ever goes away. Um, and I, I don't know what to do to make that better because I think that's just what it is. And when you've had relationships for years, you know, my team members, many are around, you know, are around for years. You know, we don't measure our employment in months at uncle, you know, you've seen the same people year after year after year. And I think, you know, that's because you get, you feel very fulfilled in that community. But when Mm -hmm. someone chooses to leave for whatever reason. And move to Colorado and leave me. It, it, it's, it's hard. I was distraught. We did, I mean, we talked mm-hmm. about Toyota trucks and mm-hmm. travel and, and then she left. You, I, you, I just saw you get a little emotional I was about hurt. your hairdresser. I was hurt. And my neighbor, my neighbor who's mm, 10. Yeah. No, he's 12 now. Told me that I had ruined his life. <laughs> wow. Cause I let her move. <laughs> I was like, I, I can't. I can't not let her move. That That is not in a healthy employment relationship. <laughs> so uh, my wife and I were walking past the, uh, the Brentwood store one day. Mm. It was on a Friday, I think. And I looked in and she was in there. She had come back to visit. She did. And I was going to uh, Chili Burrito, as we do. And I was just freaked out. But it was so good to see her. Again. You ran in and you're like, you're back. And she's like, no, I'm not no, just visiting. It's just like a ghost I saw. Well, oh, how, how have you navigated that? Because I, <laughs> I resonate with that sting. Like you get the email, you know, oh. the, the subject line is, it's always the same, like two weeks notice. And they always tell you something. Oh, it's been so great working here. And they, I, and you're like, bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. <laughs> right. <laughs> and you, you're like, damn it. <laughs> And then, uh, so how do you, how do you navigate that? You just accept it now or do you, do you, do you do what I used to do is just beg them to stay? Yeah. I mean, I'm hopeful, always hopeful because my business is so relationship driven, right? That we, we talk a lot about communication and I think it's always hard in any relationship, right? When you, whether it's your marriage or something else, right? You think you're doing a good job communicating. And you think you're doing the right thing. And it always stings when you find out maybe, you know, you haven't been doing as good a job as you thought you were, um, or you've just got really different goals and you couldn't get back on the same path, so to speak. Um, but my, you know, I go through a range of emotions. The first one's usually anger and I run a lot. And, um, I have to sort of think on things, but I have to also have a healthier view, which is, you know, I realize we're all, we're, you know, ultimately our, our lives have to be more important than our, than the employment right aspect of this. And so, um, you know, letting people go and not taking it as personally is tough. Is there one component of the business where you're at today that, you know, cause you've added this one, either a benefit or the style that you work with employees that kept them longer? Is there anything that you've done? Yeah. I mean, we use really sexy words like stability and consistency. And, you know, again, like no one's going to be like, that's the coolest shop in town. Right. And that's, that's also hard. That's humbling. You know, everybody wants to be the coolest. And I think at this point, you know, I can candidly say, you know, we are not trying to be the coolest or the hippest and we're never going to lean in on celebrity clientele, which is really big here in Nashville for so many businesses. But, you know, we lean in on the fact that our customers are tremendously loyal and they will, they will help my employees all the time. They will provide them resources. And I mean, you name it, you know, my, my customers have gone above and beyond for my employees for 15 years. Um, so I think I got off track there. I do have a question. Does Eric, is he a good tipper? I have no idea. Really good. Yeah. Just ask Shelby. Does that affect your, does that affect your haircut if you don't tip well? Have you tested that model? Um, well, I don't know. I've, all, I've just always <laughs> said, you know, she takes great care of me. And so I'm going to go above and beyond. And man, when 
there's something I need. She's usually on it before I even think about it. Like she'll, she'll proactively call me and say, Hey, I know you're looking to get, uh, you That's like to really have a shave smart. every now and That's then. Really it's smart. like, she figures it out. Yeah. Yeah. No. So I, anyways, I remember my, what I was going to say about stability and consistency is, you know, a lot of my employees are first time home buyers and the number of employees we've had over 15 years who've bought their first house and have had children and have gotten, you know, married and are having these life, they're lifing, you know, we life together. And I, I'm so proud of that. I mean, I never in a million years would have thought that opening a business, having a small business, being an entrepreneur, growing a business would really come down to celebrating those wins with my employees, with my team members. Mm. And it's, it's an amazing thing to see people get out of debt. We've watched a lot of employees get out of debt and have really consistent incomes in an industry that is known for anything but consistency, right? We are right behind bars in terms of on trend situations. Um, but to live really powerful lives, um, where, you know, folks are going to the beach and they're saving for homes and they have health care. It's not sexy. I mean, I think that's the trade off, right? Yeah. That is my trade off. And ultimately that was the decision with my forum is you got to get out of your own way on this whole sexy, cool thing. Like, what is it that you really do and do well and keep, keep doing that, mm -hmm. even though you're not going to get necessarily written up in the paper for just doing the the kind of boring stuff that's so important. Well, what we talked about at the beginning was men can't stand going to the barber in part. Well, in many cases, we were having to go to the place where women got their hair cut. Right. We felt completely out of place. But trying to get an appointment and trying to get some consistency was really, really difficult because you couldn't necessarily get the same person every time. But I can go and use the app and I can schedule out months in advance. Yeah. Now, when Shelby gets sick, that's like a crisis for me. But she's always taking care of me and make sure that I get in when I need to. Yeah. And so that that that's that's that consistency. It's, it doesn't necessarily have to be sexy. It just has to be on time and on point, right? Yeah. And y yes, I think, yeah, well, there's so much value that people don't talk about with being feeling taken care of. Yeah. You know, and... What that means, I, I think, too, in our very busy lives where so much of our work is done on the phone and not in person and not that connection point, right? And I'm really grateful you can't put a haircut in an Amazon box, mm -hmm. you know, and, you know, we're, we're a place where people come and we, you know, we don't spend a lot of time together, but over the course of years, we really do. And you feel taken care of and my employees feel taken care of. And they always say, you know, we have the best customers. We have the best customers because they care. They're invested in our success and we are invested in their success. And it's a really tight, that's a tight circle, a very tight circle for us. Yeah. A Amy, um, if you were a new <clears throat> EO member into Nashville, um, what advice would you like to hear? I'm a new EO member in Nashville or have I moved to Nashville? I you think moved, those are different brand things. brand new, brand spanking new, got no network. You just joined EO. What would help someone? What's the best experience here you could give them to help them navigate? Give. Mm. Give. You know, when I moved to Nashville in 2003, I knew no one. I knew no one. And... I think the overwhelming thing that I, that the advice I was given and that in turn I will give is Nashville's a giving place. We are built on philanthropy. We are built on service. We are built on some very traditional values of helping one another. And it makes, I think, this city so special because I do think that's really unique. And so I would say to anyone who's, here or has just got, you know, has just come to Nashville or has a business here. It's not about what you get. It's about that slowing down and what you can give in terms of your time. And, you know, people say time and treasure um, and talent, but I, I think that's really important. Mm -hmm. 
and you know, I've got some really great friends who are in EO and, and, you know, through my kids school. And I think they would tell you that their experience in Nashville has gone more smoothly as a newcomer because they've gotten involved. One last question. And I wasn't, I had totally forgotten. I wanted to ask uh-oh, this, uh-oh. <laughs> but I think it's really important. What did Amy learn about Amy as president? I didn't quit. I'm really proud of that. Mm. I know that doesn't sound very sexy either. Mm. There are times when you want to, right? Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, my EO journey um, was unique in that I became president, right, of this dynamic, amazing group of entrepreneurs who are so successful at a time when my business was in the toilet. I mean, we didn't think we were going to have a business. You know, we'd been forced closed. Half of my employees had left because they needed to put food on the table. And so they needed to go find other jobs. And we were at the lowest point my business had ever been. Right. And I hope it will never be at that point again, because it was, it was horrible. Um, And here I am trying to be the leader of leaders of all these successful people. And it was, um, it was challenging. It was a real gut check. And, you know, there, there were many times where I said, I am, I am not qualified to do this. I'm not qualified to be the leader of any of these people. Look at, look at these people. They have all these tremendously successful businesses and, you know, cool things. And here I am just a total loser. Um, but I didn't quit. I never thought that. Oh, well, I, would, I mean, I could see it in your face. I and mean, we talked about the troubles at times, but I always had faith in you. Yeah. And I think, you know, my mom always said that, you know, don't quit. And it's something that, you know, you, you don't, you don't know what you have until you're in it though. Right. It's easy to say that. Right. It's easy to say, don't quit. It's easy to say persevere. But when you're in the weeds or in the shit, in my case, you know, there's truth in, in going right. And there's, there's truth in community and sharing that and being transparent about that. So, Yeah. Amy, so glad to have you here. Such good information, good knowledge share. Um, If you are an entrepreneur here in Nashville and you are curious about what it is to be in EO, we'd love to have you visit eonashville.com. Come learn about our chapter here of 345 loving entrepreneurs who share, inform, and grow each and every day. Thanks for listening and have a wonderful rest of the week. Thanks for listening to the Decision Podcast by Nashville EO. We'll see you again next time and be sure to click subscribe to get future episodes.